Cool. So um, this year, the resolution is the United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in one or more of the following areas, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, or cybersecurity. So for this lecture, there's going to be like six main parts. Um, we're just going to be basically going through the resolution and then talking about like what debates would look like on uh, this topic. So uh, the first part is USFG. The second part is security cooperation, which is probably going to be, you know, the majority of it. Uh, then it's the word the, then NATO, and then the three topic areas. And then finally, a conclusion of like what AFs uh, you should be looking at and like what NAG positions you should probably have. So the first like important phrase in the resolution is the USFG or the United States federal government. Um, this is in every single resolution. Um, it's the three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial branch. Um, so for this topic specifically, it's going to be kind of important uh, for two main reasons. First is that it means that you get competition off of the states or like rather than the federal government doing it, each individual state government can do it. So I'm not envisioning this to be that big, but there have been a couple files put out. Um, like if you look at the SPP counter plan that Michigan put out, uh, that basically has state partner programs or SPPs work with uh, NATO countries because the states can work with foreign countries. So um, that might be something to look out for um, when like crafting an app for this resolution. But the second and um, in my opinion, more like threatening counter plan are international counter plans. So rather than fiating that the US works with other countries, you can fiat that like other organizations like the EU or UN uh, do stuff instead. So that's pretty pretty threatening because then that means that for every app you cut, you need a US key warrant or a reason for why um, the US is deeded in order for the app to happen. So um, that was just like the beginning. Then the second important phrase is security cooperation. And here's where we're gonna spend uh, most of our time. So security cooperation is defined pretty clearly in the literature as all DOD interactions with foreign security establishments to build relationships that promote like specific US security interests, uh, develop allied and partners uh, security capabilities and provide forces with access to partner nations. Um, and I'll send out an entire card doc with all these uh, after the lecture. So that's interesting for a couple of reasons. First is that it limits the topic to only DOD action, uh, which means that other counter plans like the DOS or DSCA that we'll get to in a bit will compete off of that. Um, and then second of all is that it is pretty broad at the same time as saying that it's only DOD action because it basically says that it's any DOD action. So that means that like a bunch of things like joint practices, weapons transfers, and even like just talking would be topical under the resolution. Um, another interesting part is that it has like a couple of phrases at the bottom that's all about intent, i.e. Um, it's like duty interactions to build relationships that promote interest, to develop partner um, capabilities, and provide forces with access to partner nations. So this is kind of weird, and I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out yet. Um, but you might get like, I'm not sure how this would look like, but you might get like counterplans that compete off of intent or like topicality violations that are like you don't intend to like develop specific U.S. interests. Um, it's not entirely clear as to what those will look like just yet, but um, I feel like that'll be an interesting area that might play out later in the season. So another thing about security cooperation is that there's a lot of security cooperation happening right now. Like uh, there's 4,000 security cooperation events every single year in over 130 countries uh, that the US works with. So that means that for DSADs, that's pretty bad because a lot of um, DSADs will become non-unique because generic links on security cooperation will definitely be thumped. Um, most of the security cooperation that happens right now is based off of um, counterterror or like trying to like prevent terrorism from happening. Um, and some is to like increase interoperability between countries. Uh, by the way, interoperability is a word that you'll hear a lot. Um, so interoperability just means like the ability for like countries to like work together and be cohesive. Um, so like the weapon systems are like compatible and stuff like that. So a couple counter plans that are threatening based off of the word security cooperation. Um, or actually, first, there's like a couple definitions that say the opposite. For example, in the card doc that I'll send out after this, um, actually, I'll just take a screenshot and send it out in the chat right now. But um, there's a couple cards that say here. Um, there's a couple cards that say that security cooperation is the whole of government, um, which is pretty interesting. 
Um, I think that the literature is pretty clear that all security cooperation has to include the DoD, but not very clear on whether it can only be the DoD. So I think that affirmatives that are like DoD and the DOS cooperate with each other and with NATO would probably be, probably be topical, although that's all a question of like debate and what. So um, a couple important things based off of this. First is the DOS kind of plan. So the DOS, the Department of State, is I think going to be like the biggest kind of plan this year. Um, and it'll be the one that like AFs are like built to be because it's like the biggest net generic. So you should probably frame this as like a pick out of the DOD. And it says that rather than the DOD doing stuff, it should only be the DOD, DOS. Um, and it can fiat through like most def most generic deficits that people have. For example, um, a couple deficits are there's like a lack of info for the DOS because the DOD has like all classified info. But you can easily fiat out of that by just saying like the DOD should give the DOS all the um, info to um, or give them all the relevant info. And that still would compete under security cooperation because it's not like the DOD is going to cooperate with foreign militaries, but rather that the DOD is cooperating with the US and the US is cooperating with foreign militaries. A second common gen uh, generic deficit is that the US is underfunded, which can easily be solved by just like fiatting that the we should fiat fund the US more. And then um, the last deficit and probably the most common in the literature is that the DOD is the one that normally does this activity. Um, but of course that doesn't matter um, in the conscious debate where fiat definitely solves it. So the next part is government titles. So um, there's some pretty good cards that security cooperation has to be under Title 10 um, because that's like where it's defined under. So um, government titles are basically like where in the law that is actually like written in. So security cooperation being under Title 10 means that other DOD activity that's not under Title 10, i.e. like um, Title 22 and Title 50, the DS, uh, sorry, the NSA, et cetera, um, would all compete because um, the only thing that's under Title 10 is the DSCA or the Defense uh, Security Cooperation Agency. So other agencies would also be able to be used as counter plans. Um, that has a couple implications. First, it means that there is going to be a more specific trade-off to side. So I'm guessing that y'all know about the DOD trade-off to side, but then um, with this counter plan, there would also be a DSCA trade-off to side, or um, you get to like, say like the DSCA is focusing on something right now, but it needs resources, um, the plan would trade off as it would take most of those resources away. Um, that's bad for whatever reason. Like the one that Camp Cut was talking about how like the DSCA is focused on like helping Ukraine win the war right now, but the plan would trade off. That, um, but I think in my opinion, the more scary implication is that counter plans under the, under the DOD can compete, which means that not only do you need a DOD key warrant, but you also need a reason for why the DSCA is key. For example, um, why can't the NSA, the Air Force, the Army, um, et cetera, do all that? You need a reason for why the DSCA can be the only one who does that. Um, this also means that you can get a couple deficits. Uh, so there's this one article, um, Thaler at all 16, that has a bunch of reasons for why Title 10 authority is pretty bad. Um, and then it like gives a bunch of deficits for why um, it's specifically bad for like cooperating with like organizations like NATO and also for why it's bad um, with like emerging or to work with emerging technology. So both of those could be used as like um, overview cards as to why the DOS counter plan solves better or um, the you know NSA counter plan solves better. Um, so that being said, there's a couple like fairly qualified definitions that explain how security cooperation doesn't have to be DoD or doesn't have to be uh, Title 10 or the DoD and it can be any actor. So the Zachary card that I put in the chat um, earlier um, explains how security cooperation can be like any actor, any um, assistance, et cetera. And it doesn't only need to be the DoD, but it can be like anything, any actor to achieve the like stated goals of the security cooperation. And that includes, it specifically like points out like the DOS and intelligence community can all do that. Um, yeah, I guess, do any of y'all have any questions so far? You can either put them in chat or just ask. Um, I'll go in for now, and then uh, if y'all have any questions, just put them in the chat, and I'll see them. Okay, um, the next part of the resolution is the, so this is surprisingly going to be pretty important this year. Um, so the resolution is uh, the use of Jesus to eventually increase security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. 
So um, there's a debate as to whether the means all or the can mean any. So um, here, the Supreme Court of Kentucky card that I'll put into the chat real quick. Um, so if y'all read that card, um, it explains how the uh, means the entire body and not discrete parts, which basically indicates that like um, picks out of individual countries are competitive. So that means that like if you decide to pick out of like Turkey, Turkey, Hungary, or Poland, then um, that would be like a legitimate counter plan. So uh, it's pretty bad for the affirmative because then it means that all affirmatives need to have like an either an all of NATO key warrant, which is normally like a NATO cohesion impact, which can easily be impact turned. Or it needs to have like a reason for why like Turkey individually is key, for why like Hungary individually is key, for why Poland individually is key, which are like pretty hard cards to find. Um, however, there's some other cards that are pretty good. Um, here, I'll answer another one into the chat that explains that the is not all. So the can be like any of them. So while this is good for the affirmative, as in they don't need to deal with like individual country picks, it's bad for the negative when it's a question of like whether or what ask can do. Because if the does not mean all, then that means that cooperating with the NATO can mean like just cooperating with the Baltics or just cooperating with like Britain. So that means that ask would kind of be OP because it means that they can basically do what or they can cooperate with any of the NATO countries in any of the emerging tech areas. So then when debating this, it's not only a question of like predictability, i.e. which definition is more qualified, et cetera, but also like debatability, like which is worse, like having apps that can cooperate with individual countries or like picks out of individual countries, forcing uh, like teams to like uh, have a reason why every individual country is key. Um, this is going to be a debate that's going to be pretty big this year. Um, in my opinion, predictability probably goes towards the affirmative side, i.e. the affirmative sides are probably more qualified. Um, and there's like pretty good indicts to the negative cards. Um, but the debatability card or the debatability args go to the neg. Um, but if you come to the competition lecture, we're gonna cover all this and like how to like compare between that and stuff like that. So the next part of the resolution is NATO. Um, so NATO is pretty or NATO um is gonna be weird this year because there's pretty good cards that it's just the 30 countries. Um, but then there's also a bunch of cards that say that it can be more than the 30 countries that are like actually part of it. It can also be stuff like the partner countries that NATO works with. Um, and it's also gonna be weird because throughout the entire year, there's two allies joining to uh, NATO, both Swinland, oh my God, Sweden and Finland are joining uh, NATO throughout the year. So that's gonna make some definitions change over time. So what is NATO? Um, NATO is like an organization that is formed in order to like, or it was originally formed in order to like combat the USSR. And once the NATO, once the USSR collapsed, it like changed its mission statement to just like ensure a uh, widespread peace across Europe. So there's eight articles in it. Um, article one is like, don't start wars. Article two basically says you should be democratic and capitalist, which probably allows for good uh, kalings, especially if you're like, uh, especially since AFS are like forced to cooperate with NATO. Article three is basically saying to do military funding. Article four is saying to consult about like security issues. Article five is the most important article. So this is an article that you'll probably hear most often. Um, and it says that an attack on one is an attack on all, which means that if like Russia invades the Baltics, then it automatically becomes a US Russia war. Um, so which means that like um, article five is like the main deterrent factor of NATO and why like NATO is so powerful. Um, article six um, is basically like defining the um, parameters of article five. Um, it says like where an attack on NATO counts and um, where it doesn't, i.e. like on like NATO countries, it counts um, outside. It has like some specifications. Um, article seven is like, don't conflict with the UN, other like international organizations. And article eight is like, don't enter agreements that uh, contradict this one. So the main debate over this year is gonna be partner versus member countries. So member countries are like the 30 core ones. Um, I'll insert a couple cards that says like NATO is the 30 countries. Um, 
Oh, and this is all in the files chat, by the way, in the uh, Discord. So those cards say that like NATO is the 30 countries that um, are part of NATO, but then there's also other cards that says like NATO is multi-tiered, i.e. it has um, like the 30 countries of the member core are there, um, but then there's also like a bunch of partner nations that are like working with it and are also part of NATO. So um, it kind of, or like if partner countries are allowed, that probably like changes the debate a lot because then that means that affirmatives are allowed to work with like any part of NATO. For example, like they're able to work with a bunch of like um, countries like Taiwan, Israel, and South Korea, which obviously have like pretty big advantage grounds. And then um, the affirmative argument for this is that partners are like pretty much like clearly defined as under the organization, i.e. like, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization includes like all members of the organization, including like the people that work with it. Um, but it's pretty hard for debatability to like justify like adding like 40 more countries to the already like pretty big um, 30 countries that uh, the US can work with under the resolution. Um, but if you wanna like get better at T, uh, I'd highly recommend running a partner country app because most two and R's will probably be T partner countries, but you can also um, just like, go for it, or you can also like win the argument. Um, so something that's gonna be weird this year is also the strategic concept just came out. So the strategic concept is like a document that comes out around like every decade-ish. So um, it just came out in 2022 in like July 29th or something like that. Um, and it focused on Russia obviously because of Ukraine, but it also mentioned China for the first time and it talked about it in like um, pretty hostile terms. Um, and it also talks about tech and the cyber domain um, as being like a big problem that they want to secure. So the strategic concept um, also not unique to bunch of this ads because it proved that like NATO was already focusing on like tech stuff like cyber AI and biotech, um, the protection of that. So the implications of all that. Um, first, you absolutely need a NATO key warrant, specifically why the framework of NATO is key. Because um, if they win that NATO is like the security framework, then a kind of plan to like bilaterally cooperate with like every individual member of NATO would be competitive as well. Um, you also need a um, reason for why like, or yeah, so like above like why the framework of NATO, i.e. like the organization of NATO is specifically key. But then you also need a reason for why the like NATO countries are key, i.e. why like the UN, EU, or any other international organization can't just like do the kind of or do the plan by itself and why that one's all. Um, cool. Then I guess I'll talk about the different areas of the resolution. So this is the AI, biotech, and cybersecurity. So um all of these, to be honest, I don't envision a lot of topicality debates on. I feel like uh the definitions are pretty bad for both the app and the neg, but it's pretty arbitrary as to what is included and what is not. Um so first is AI. Um, so AI is like any technique, any technology that's like aimed at like approximating human cognition uh, using machines. So um, I think that this is probably gonna be the second biggest top part of the topic. Uh, and it allows stuff like the AI subs app that Michigan put out that like says like cooperate with NATO on like the harmonization of like submarines, it allows for like the AI ethics to like change like how, uh, or, or to like modify like how AI is developed right now in order to like avoid like tyrannical AI. Um, but the main topicality definition or the main like topicality debate that I see happening for AI is the idea of semi-autonomous versus in autonomous. So semi-autonomous uh, means that it's like involves humans in loop while autonomous means that it just goes by itself. So um, like affirmatives like PGMs um, or in fact AI subs are probably semi-autonomous. So it's a question as to whether that's included in artificial intelligence. Uh, this definition is pretty athleting in my opinion, but there are some like decent cards that say that um, semi-autonomous um, stuff is not included. Um, like I'll put another card in the chat real quick. Um, that basically says like semi-autonomous is not included. And the debatability case is pretty strong for the NEG um, because like including semi-autonomous would probably make it pretty hard 
but then I think the predictability debate just like pretty decisively goes affirmative and I'll put the affirmative cards in the chat as well. Um, so yeah, uh, the next area after AI is biotech. Um, I probably think that this is going to be the smallest area because there's not a lot of DOD key warrants. So the DOS kind of plan would probably solve most of these, but affirmatives um, like vaccines and um, CRISPR are, are, and super soldiers are like different apps that have been put out by camps that are fall under biotech. Um, biotech is defined as like any technological innovation based off of biology. Um, so uh, stuff like imitating like spider silk, stronger body armors, et cetera, are all like what is defined in biotech. Um, the last part of the resolution is cybersecurity. So this is probably going to be the biggest um, part of the topic, in my opinion, because you can take like any military asset, like space assets, nukes, AUVs, et cetera, and say that we need to increase the cybersecurity fit because like Russia or China will hack into it. So it's pretty easy to craft an app around a cyber um, like asset, in my opinion. Um, so cybersecurity is like the protection of like any electronic devices and their communication channels. Um, so that'll also allow apps like offensive cyber operations or stuff like that. That would mean that um, cyber is pretty is pretty much going to be like the biggest um, part of the resolution. I'd say like sixty percent of apps are probably going to be cyber based. So to conclude. What does an AF need in order to be successful in this resolution? Um, every AF needs a US key warrant, which is like, why can't the rest of NATO do the AF? They need a DOD key warrant. Why can't like the DOS or other department or another branch of the government, like the um, judicial or legislative branch, do the AF? They need a DSCA key warrant. Why can't another agency under the DOD do the AF? They need a NATO key warrant. Why can't other international organizations do the AF? And they need a tech key warrant. Why can't the US and NATO do security cooperation over something else? Um, so based off of that, I think this topic is pretty um, neg biased because if any of the affirmatives don't have any of these, then negatives can win. Um, which also means that like neg positions that you should probably prep out at the beginning of the year in order to like have a chance or in order to like have a good shot against most of these apps, uh, probably like an EU counter plan for apps without US key warrants, uh, DOS counter plans for apps without DOD key warrants, NSA counter plans for apps without DSCA key warrants, um, a country pick. For uh, Eric, I think you're um, a country pick for like apps without a NATO key warrant, probably like Turkey or something like that. Um, an agenda politics to add as a net benefit to the EU counter plan. A DSCA trade off to add as net benefits to EU, DOS, and NSA counter plans. And then just generically a process counter plan to have a general fail safe against like new or like really good apps that you like haven't prepped out yet. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stop the recording.